Hello, my lovelies. Welcome to my channel. I am Pinky. For those of you guys that are new to my channel, welcome. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button and that like so you guys can help with the algorithm. For those of you guys that have been following for a while now, welcome back, my lovelies. I just finished doing some spell work. I am very hyped right now. Um, extremely energetic. And I was pacing back and forth after grounding myself. And I was enveloped in this energy of my guides almost like I can't explain it it's it's this this communication that I have with them where it just it was like some people need to hear the reality of things and we need to slap some honesty I think that that's something that right now the world is lacking in so what I decided is, you know what, with all this energy, let me just channel. We're going to look into each one of the signs, starting with Aries all the way to Pisces. What is it that you need to know at this point and time? All right, my lovely. So hope you guys are ready. We're not holding back. Let's get into it. Spirit guides, ancestors, and archangels, please step forward. Allow us to open up as a vessel of communication. Let it be you who speaks through me. Spirits of divination, I invoke thee. I open myself up. Allow us to see, hear, sense, feel, and receive the messages loud and clearly for each one of the zodiac signs. We're going to start off now with Aries, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus. What is it that they need to know at this point in time? What is it that they need to know at this point in time? If you guys like these readings, definitely comment, let me know, like the video. And like I said, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. All right, here we go. Aries, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. What is it that you need to know at this point in time? Here we go. Okay, we have the Nine of Pentacles, Three of Wands, and the Star card. Beautiful energy. Beautiful energy. Right here, right, we have the Seven of Pentacles. So the Seven of Pentacles is being, being able to see the fruits of your labor. It is being able to see the manifestations of things that you've been working hard or putting a lot of effort and energy towards. And it is finally growing, Aries. It is finally evolving. It is finally unfolding for you. Now, with the Nine of Pentacles, there is money that's coming your way, financial stability. But this is also speaking to me about being able to find peace when it comes to your finances and your career. So if you've been struggling or if there's been a bit of resistance or a bit, a bit of lack, what they're telling you is you need to let go of that fear because stability is finally unfolding for you. Now, for some of you guys, this could be through a proposition. For others of you, it could be a representation of an offering, an offering that's coming through. For some of you guys, this could be career uh, or connected to your job. Three of Wands does indicate to me almost like getting to the point of receiving. So if you've been trying to manifest something in your life or if you've been trying to bring something towards you, you've put it out to the universe and the universe has hurt you, Aries. All you have to do is put yourself almost in the empress energy, um, regardless of what your sex or gender is. When I say in the emperor's energy, the emperor is always about action because it's masculine energy. It is being forceful, it's going out of your way, it is making things happen. With the empress energy, it is all about the femininity. It is about standing in your power, or I should say sitting in your power, and opening your heart to receiving the blessings that are already on their way for you. And the star card. Star card is a beautiful energy. This is an indication of things opening up for you. Of the astrologically, it is the planets that are aligning to assist you in your wish fulfillment or being able to see a hope, a desire, a wish being manifested. So the message for you, Aries, today, it is open your heart to receiving what you've been asking for because it's finally underway. All right, my lovelies. Now let's go to Taurus. Let's see what the messages are here for Taurus, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus. Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus, Taurus. What is it that they need to know at this point in time? What is it that they need to know at this point in time? Taurus, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. All right, here we go. Your first card here is the Nine of Cups. 
Two of Pentacles and the Hanged Man. General energy here is the sun. Beautiful energy, Taurus. This is an indication of wish being fulfilled. This is a message of there are blessings that are unfolding. There are people that are coming into your life as well as people that are going out of your life. But this is to the best of your interest, to your highest good. The sun is a representation of joy, of happiness, of blissfulness, of embracing all of that energy, of maintaining your positive attitude and positive outlook in life. It is the not wish, wishful thinking. It has more to do with counting your blessings. So what they're telling you here is there's almost a feeling like there's been lack of stability or lack of fulfillment. This could be in every aspect of your life. This could be with family. This could be with friends. This could be your finances. This could be your career. This could be relationships. There is something you've been hoping and wanting, and this is on a soul level, something that your soul's been craving or desiring. But with the two of pentacles, there's been lack of stability. There is a need to stabilize, to align yourself to that which you're wanting or wanting to draw towards you. And it starts with your way of viewing the world or the way of changing your perspective to align yourself to what it is that you're wanting to bring towards you. So it's kind of like that energy of, you know, the, the desire of, as an example, wanting to manifest financial stability. Uh, this is a conversation that I recently had with one of my clients. And it almost seems like every time he has hit certain goals, he hits those goals, but very shy away from what he was either claiming or trying to manifest. And it's almost a feeling of like helplessness or feeling like Maybe, maybe even doubting himself um, if he's capable of manifesting those things that he's asking for. And the conversation was, I want you, Taurus, to understand that whatever it is that you're deciding to want to manifest or that you're wanting to work towards some type of goal or achievement that you're trying to make happen, if your conscious mind was not aware of that desire, meaning if you weren't craving or wanting that, which you're wanting to bring towards you, if it wasn't meant for you, it wouldn't even be in your consciousness to be aware of that desire. So what does that mean? That means that you've already manifested that. That means that you've already had that in a different dimension, in a different parallel dimension or in the highest vibration of yourself, you've already experienced that, which is why your soul recognizes that and that's something that it's desiring or wanting. So what they're telling you is get out of your own fucking way and let it unfold. Open yourself up completely. Give yourself the opportunity of receiving what you're desiring or what you're wanting to make happen. You're the only one that can accept what you want, accept that it is done, and accept if you deserve it. Because if there's a part of you that doubts, that fears, or that doesn't believe you're capable of making it happen, you've already made up your mind. So it, therefore, it's already manifested in the aspect of not having it. So you got to change your perspective on that. Stop blaming outside energy or, or other people around you. Mind you, a lot of the people that we choose to be around, it's almost like we kind of learn from them, right? And we experience certain things. As an example, if in your family, all you've experienced is, uh, for instance, uh, if relationship or a commitment or marriage is something that you're looking for and you look around your family or around your relatives and there 
there's a struggle there to to have some type of stable relationship where everyone you know has married twice or three times or they've been left or or whatever because you're growing up in that energy in that perspective you're almost conditioning yourself to feel or to accept that that is your destiny my lovely you have your own destiny to fulfill your destiny is not your father's destiny your destiny is not your mother's destiny or your aunts and uncles. It is your destiny and you decide. You're the one that is driving that boat. So if you don't steer it in the right direction and you're just going about life without any direction, you're going to crash and burn. But if you know where you're going and you have a clear perspective on what it is that you want, you will get from point A to point B. All right, my lovelies. Okay, now let's go to Gemini. Let's see what the message is here for Gemini, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. For what is it that they need to know at this point in time? Gemini, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. Gemini, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. Okay, here we go. Gemini, we have the King of Cups. We have the Magician. And we have Justice card. Wow. Wow two major arcanas and we have the ace of swords gemini you're getting a lot of ideas and you're going to be experiencing a lot of new ideas a lot of new ways of doing things that you may feel like you're being challenged or perhaps people around you family members uh, your loved ones even your husband or your wife may challenge um, almost like I wouldn't necessarily say not believing in you, but questioning or doubting your capability because you're trying to do things like you're trying to march to the beat of your own drum. You're trying to make things very your way. And this means thinking outside the box. What they're telling you is don't doubt yourself. Listen to your intuition, Gemini. If as an example, if there is a certain way of doing things at work, uh, but you find a more efficient or a more uh, easier way of making things, you can try it out. And if it's working out for you, stick with it. Even if everyone around you is telling you, <clears throat> no, this is how you do it. It's been done this way forever. Like, listen to your intuition because right now you're getting a lot of spiritual download. You're getting a lot of information that is going to help you and assist you into living a better life or being able to stand on your own and allow others around you to see really what you're capable of doing. But it's going to take for you to trust yourself. With the King of Cups here, listening and opening yourself up to your intuition, paying attention to your intuition. And this is also indicating to me having very vivid dreams pay attention to your dreams because with the magician here you have all the tools you have all the ingredients you have everything you need to make certain things happen right you have everything in your possession to be able to not only stand out but to be able to make things happen in a more effective way in your life and with this it's going to bring a lot of stability it's going to bring a lot of balance into your life it is about being able to trust yourself enough that even if the outside world is telling you you are or you're crazy for thinking that way or it's impossible for you to make it happen or to do something or if you're starting as an example if you're starting your own business and people are telling you, no, like, why would you be silly enough to do that in these in this time that we're living in? It's like everything is not promised. Like there's a lot of changes that are happening. Like don't jeopardize that. If in your heart you feel like you need to do it, do it, Gemini, because this is going to open your world to a whole different level of from what you've experienced up until now. I see a lot of growth in this. But it's going to take, again, the challenge here is to really trust yourself. Okay? All right, Gemini. Now let's go to Cancer. Let's see what the message is here for Cancer, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. 
Oh, we got cards flying out. All right, so we have the Ace of Wands here. Cancer. Okay, so they're showing me here almost like the flame of passion being reignited. For some of you guys, this is inspiration. It could be an aha moment. It could be a situation where you've been questioning or wondering um, a certain choice or route to take, and it's finally coming to you, Cancer. You're finally being... Uh, really listening to what your heart is telling you and following that. You have the Four of Swords here. So what they're telling you is, again, there's almost this need to disconnect completely from your ego to be able to receive the messages of inspiration that are going to guide you and that are going to open up more doors for you. And the Ten of Cups. So it is about connecting to yourself and being grounded. I highly, highly encourage you guys right now at this point in time to meditate, you guys, to really meditate and ground yourself. Why? Because through this process, you're going to become more awakened. You're going to get more spiritual downloads. You're going to get clear, concise answers to the, to the doubts or questions that you have. And you have the Six of Pentacles here, giving and taking, receiving. It is the ever-ending cycle of eternity, of giving, like I said, of receiving, of asking and getting the answers, of giving help or asking for help and receiving that assistance. It is about tuning into the ever-collective energy of source, and source is your higher spirit. It is the... It's kind of like all the answer or all the questions that you have, you carry those answers within yourself. You just need to tune in more to it. I think you guys have a tendency of getting overly emotional, especially right now. You're being challenged. However, in this process, if you maintain yourself and you keep yourself grounded, you meditate or you go out of your way to you know, cleanse yourself or to connect or do guided meditation, that's going to keep you grounded, but it's also going to open yourself up to being able to receive or to be able to quiet your mind, to be able to listen to the answers within yourself. There is definitely an answer that's coming towards you, something you've been waiting for or wanting to hear from, and it's going to bring a lot of happiness to you, a lot of wish fulfillment, um, almost a feeling of accomplishment or a, a feeling of finally being able to uh, receive or experience what you've been trying to manifest or what you've been hoping for. It's finally coming through for you. So again, highly encourage you guys to meditate and connect with your higher spirit. All right. Oh, all right. I'm going to pull it back. Wow. You guys are <laughs> getting cards left and right. Okay. Here we go. This is for Leo, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. What is it that they need to know at this point in time? Leo, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. What is it that they need to know at this point in time? Leo, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. All right. So we're starting off here with the Sun card. Joy, happiness. This is your card, Leo. This is being empowered. This can also represent receiving unexpected news that is very positive and it's a blessing in disguise. So it could come off as a situation where you've been challenged or you're being challenged and finally the outcome is positive and it is to your benefit and it's definitely going to benefit you. So it's almost like, like I said, it's almost like a blessing in disguise and when I hear that it usually indicates a situation that is not ideal but from that situation a blessing happens and it's something that is surprising or you weren't necessarily expecting it. Your next card here is Ten of Cups, Leo. Beautiful energy here. Very happy energy as well. And the Queen of Wands, this is your energy, Leo. You're coming into your power. You are believing and trusting more in yourself. I feel like for the next coming weeks, you guys are going to continuously keep growing in your confidence or growing in your trust to the universe or believing that there is a purpose to everything. It's being optimistic and positive. That is going to definitely bring about the change that you're wanting or desiring. The sun card, like I say, it's joyfulness. It's happiness. It's a blessing. Ten of cups is emotional fulfillment or being, I'm hearing for some of you guys even feeling relieved because something comes through for you. This is news. This is a blessing. This could be 
um, an opportunity. This is something that is going to elevate you or take you to the next level. And there is definitely stability in this process. Queen of Wands, like I said, it's your energy. It's being empowered. It's uh, taking action uh, when even when you feel a bit a bit stuck or like there is a bit of resistance right now. Um, and, and the reason I am saying that is because in this card, you could see her sitting, right? But it almost showed me like a vision of feeling like this is the ground or the dirt and feeling stuck. So there's some type of feeling of being stuck, but you're being raised with this energy here of the sun and the ten of cups you're being raised to your highest vibration you're being realigned or redirected for some of you guys this blessing this unexpected blessing could be a situation that turns around a situation for you where perhaps you didn't see that situation or that opportunity coming your way and it comes out out of left field and you were definitely not expecting it it is surprising but it is happiness and joyfulness and being blessed. So again, count your blessings, Leo, because there's more blessings coming underway for you. And I didn't even look at the bottom energy here. The bottom energy here is the three of cups. So again, celebratory type of energy. This is uh, celebrating. This is uh, getting to the point of contentment, happiness. Uh, it's a moment a positive moment in your life where there's going to be a lot of celebratory type of energy, a lot of mingling or dealing with the people around you or people, loved ones and people that you trust. Um, very beautiful, beautiful energy here. Okay, now let's go to Virgo. What are the messages for Virgo, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus? What is it that they need to know at this point in time? Virgo, Virgo, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. What is it that they need to know at this point in time? Virgo, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. Here we go, Virgo. All right, your first card here is the Ten of Swords, Six of Pentacles, Ace of Wands. All right. Bottom card, Eight of Swords. Okay. Whew, heavy energy for you, Virgo. You've been stuck in a situation or you've been dealing with something that has you feeling like you're not in control, has you feeling like you're losing control, or has you feeling like things are not progressing the way you would have wanted. It is okay to feel a bit restless. Uh, for some of you guys, it could be even like having trouble or difficulty sleeping, but it has a lot to do with the overthinking that you're doing right now. Now, with the Ten of Swords, there's an ending cycle here. There's something that is coming to a conclusion. Something that, yes, has been painful or difficult for you to process or deal with. However, the positive in this is that it's finally to its culmination. Moving forward, you're no longer going to be deal. You're coming out of that energy of the Ten of Swords. And you're moving towards the Six of Pentacles, giving and receiving. So there is a situation that you're dealing with that has caused a lot of torment in your life or a lot of difficulty, a lot of strife. But in this process, you're coming out at the very end of it. And you're being able to see the light at the end of the tunnel, but you're also learning the, the major lesson here is to learn reciprocation. And that's with everything that you do in life, Virgo. This could be relationships. This could be at work. This could be with family, with friends, etc. The main focus and message here for you is to stop doing for those that are not willing to do half the shit you do for them. It is about protecting your energy and not giving your energy away to those that are undeserving of it. Yes, you are the sign of servitude. So it is natural instinct for you to want to help people. But at this point in time, you've gone through this shit enough eight of swords and 10 of swords, you've put yourself in positions where it was not beneficial for you, where people left you feeling stuck or confused. You're done with that 10 of swords. And in this learn that it is important to give as much as it is to receive. So stop emptying your cup to fill other people's cups. Like I said, this is with relationships, partnerships, whatever, in every aspect of your life. 
there is a need for you to see clearly and concisely as an example of people at work constantly rely on you because you're the one that's always there on time because you're the one that never calls off, calls off because you're the one that is always uh, picking up other people's slack. It's time you stop doing that or it's time you start speaking up and asking for a better raise or a bigger raise than in comparison to everyone else that's slacking. It's time for you to know your worth is what they're telling you. And by doing so, the Ace of Wands, you're being recharged. You're going into a new cycle in your life where excitement is all around you. There is opportunity and there is promise. But again, it starts with you teaching others how you want to be treated from here on out. All right. Okay. Now let's go with Libra. Let's see what's going on with Libras. What is it that they need to know at this point in time? Libra, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. Libra, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. What is it that they need to know at this point in time? Libra, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. All right, here we go. Libra, we have the King of Cups, Nine of Wands, Eight of Swords. Wow. And the World card. I see you missing or thinking of someone that may be at a distance or there was no conclusion or no ending to something. There is a bit of distancing here. With the King of Cups, this is an indication to me that there has been a, it's almost like it's been a process for you. There's a lot of healing that needs to happen in this situation. But with the Nine of Wands, it's time for you to stop trying. It's time for you to accept what is right now at this very moment stop resisting it so that you can finally free yourself from feeling helpless or feeling like things are not going your way they're not going your way because you're choosing to remain in this energy when you have the world card here and the world card indicates not only an ending cycle but it also indicates being able to go to the next chapter in your life so it's about stop resisting what is happening right now, it's time to flip the page. It's time to stop deciding to be in this, I feel sorry for myself, or life is very difficult, things never go my way, um, or people are constantly making me feel a certain type of way, or making me feel belittled, or making me feel confused. The reason why they're making you feel all those things is because you're choosing to put up with that fuckery. At this point, release yourself from that. Stop trying. Nine of Wands, it's time to throw in the towel. It's time to stop wasting your energy. Stop giving your love away to those that are not deserving of it so that you can finally free yourself and enter the next cycle in your life. Um, not only with empowerment, but knowing what you deserve and not apologizing for asking for what you deserve. All right, Libra? To the point. <laughs> All right, now let's go to Scorpio, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. Spirit guides, what is it that they need to know at this point in time? Scorpio, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. What is it that they need to know at this point in time? Scorpio, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. What is it that they need to know at this point in time? All right, here we go. We have the Queen of Cups, King of Wands, the Magician, and the Ten of Pentacles. Okay, beautiful energy here, Scorpio. So what they're telling you, the energy that is currently influencing or the energy that is, um, the general energy here is Ten of Pentacles. So this is indicating to me, again, family, family dynamic, um, your home life being very important at this point in time. Queen of Cups, it is your energy here. So you, you may be dealing with a, a fire energy, uh, Sagittarius, Leo, or Aries. Doesn't have to be masculine. It could be feminine. It's a general reading. But what they're showing me here is there is almost like a, for some of you guys, if you've been trying to manifest a long-term commitment, that's finally coming through for you guys. And for a lot of you guys, you may be dealing with a Leo. Or for others of you, you may be dealing with a fire sign that's coming in. And I'm only, I'm, I'm kind of seeing it as a reflection of one another, a reflection of one another here with the magician. Uh, 
it, it's almost like drawing or bringing towards bringing towards you the partner or the person that you've been seeking or have been manifesting with the magician i feel like for a lot of you guys you kind of have manifested each other now for others of you what they're telling you here with the queen of cups and the king of wands it is important to maintain your emotional um your emotions basically to keep them in check and to not allow yourself uh, to be rattled or to be challenged and going going on the defensive mode, it's going to be very important for you to keep, like I said, to keep your emotions in check. I feel like for some of you guys, you may be tempted or you may be rattled. And if you're not smart about it, um, I feel like you're going to go in the attack and it's going to show a very not pleasant side to yourself. Um... It's almost like feeling like you're being attacked and going on the defensive. But in reality, it's kind of like you overthinking and being overly emotional. So you don't want to come off as the crazy. You don't want to come off as you're not in control of your emotions. Uh, you don't want to come off in the negative aspect. So what they're telling you is stay in control of your emotions. Keep yourself grounded. You have all the ingredients and all the tools around you, all the people around you that are going to help you uh, go through this situation that may be a bit challenging for you in the next coming weeks. Um, and again, I feel like it has a lot to do with the uh, with your emotions. So you may feel like you're going to go through or you've been going through this like, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, this roller coaster of up and downs, um, feeling a lot of emotions all at once. And again, like I said, I highly encourage you guys to keep yourself grounded. Do yourself cleansings or go around anything that is, you know, water, you know, to the beach, to the lake, to the uh, to the creek, or even as simplistic as running yourself a bath. Um, this is going to help you be more in tune and more balanced because I feel like you guys are going to be challenged. But I feel like if you're challenged and you rise to the occasion, be more methodical. Uh, you're going to come out not only stronger, but I feel like you're going to come out uh, much more wiser because you're going to you're getting you're getting to the point of learning how to control your emotions. It's kind of like that saying that people say, you know, um, teach your mind to be more stronger than your heart. And there is a lot of weight into that in, into that message, because if you're able to train your mind to be stronger than your heart, even through disillusionment or even through uh, sorrow or difficulties or feeling emotional. Um, if you train your mind to be stronger, you're able to tell yourself, hey, I need to take a step back. I need to breathe because I'm getting overly emotional and I need to disconnect from that energy. And once you're able to do that, you're able to pretty much execute or make decisions on a clear, concise mind. Okay. So basically, don't let people get you out of your out of your character, uh, Scorpio, because if you do, you're going to come out being like the crazy one and you don't want that. <laughs> All right, let's go to Sagittarius. Let's see what's going on with Sagittarius. What is it that they need to know at this point in time? Sagittarius, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. Okay, we have cards coming out. We have the Empress card here. I think, I'm not sure which reading I did, um, with this card and for some reason I think I said it was a world card um yeah the message is the same you guys I channeled the reading so if that's what came out that's what it was <laughs> I was just remembered or reminded right now okay so let's see who is this Sagittarius okay the wheel the Emperor, King of Cups. All right. Sagittarius, I see you finally opening up. I see you finally being able to embrace your emotions. And I feel for a lot of you guys, you're going towards someone that you've been hoping, wanting, or desiring, but you've been holding back. King of Cups indicates to me being emotionally available at this, at this point. With the Empress card, I feel like you're going towards 
the person that you've wished for, the person that you've desired, the person that you've been wanting for a while. The Empress energy is that of femininity. Femininity doesn't have to be female. It could be masculine. Um, it's a general reading. But the Empress in itself is the message of love. It is the message of the mother. It is the message of the woman or the man that you see as wifey or hubby material. This is you almost like synchronizing with the planets and the universe conspiring to bring you guys together. The Wheel of Fortune is, again, yes, it is about a cycle. It is about destiny. I feel like for some of you guys, you ran away from your destiny or you let an, uh, you let an opportunity pass you by where this connection was destined. It could have been circumstances. It could have been that you were married, they were single, or you were single, they were married, or you have kids, or you're in an unhappy relationship, or you were in a toxic relationship, vice versa. It's like every scenario that you can think of that was difficult, that's what you went through when you met this person. But it's like the universe is aligning itself again because there is a predestined contract here. There is a reason and a purpose why this person is coming into your life returning to your life or for some of you guys now that you're emotionally available this person finally comes into your life and the emperor card here is you know uh, significant of structure of balance of making something official of being able to be at the same in the same time and at the same moment it's almost like everything is aligning to bring you guys together so the highest message here for you guys is whatever wish fulfillment that you've been trying to attain or manifest is finally coming through. But for the majority of you, it is meeting the person at the perfect time when in the past, for some of you guys, it could have been very inconvenient circumstances. It is finally coming in alignment. It's almost like, let's give it another go, but this time let's do it right. Um, and in the process of making it right, it turns into something solid. So Beautiful energy here, Sagittarius. All right, now let's go to Capricorn, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. Capricorn, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. Capricorn, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. What is it that they need to know at this point in time? What is it that they need to know at this point in time? Okay, here we go. We have the Page of Pentacles. The Judgment, Four of Cups, and Ten of Swords. Okay. So, Ten of Swords, you're ending a cycle, a difficult cycle, a cycle where there's been a lot of lessons, brutal lessons, I should say. And you're finally moving along. You're finally having almost like a clear, concise depiction of what you want your life to be the type of partner you want or the type of job you want or the type of pay you're wanting. It is reevaluating what you thought you wanted at some point in time and being okay with changing your mind about it. But while you do that, you're being more clear and concise about what you want. Therefore, the possibilities of you attaining that are much higher. Judgment card here is a decision that you've made in regards to a past situation. Unfortunately, I do see that situation popping back up again for you guys. So this could be a person from the past uh, where there was a lot of pain or a lot of difficulties connected to the situation. And for some of you guys, it was almost a situation that had no ending um, or perhaps there was no explanation. It's like you guys kind of just went on your own ways. And I feel that there is a revisiting of that situation. I feel like there is a person that's coming towards you that has been wanting to reach out or communicate with you for quite a while, but they're finally growing the, you know, growing the balls or growing the ovaries to reach out to you and to contact you. And they're making the choice of trying to come back around. And I see you guys a bit weary. I see you guys really being in your head about this situation. But again, Ten of Swords indicates whatever's been done, whatever's been ended, if you've moved on, if you're currently dealing with other people, don't even entertain this person. Why? 
Because if it's taken them that long to reach out, if it's taken them that long to figure out what you meant to them in your li in their lives, it just means that what they plan what the plants were, what they planned didn't work out, and that's the reason why they're retracting. So again, if you've moved on, uh, don't entertain that idea. For others of you, if this is a person you've been wanting to hear from, or you've been still holding on to the hope that they would be reaching out or whatnot, um, it's okay to open yourself up or allow them to maintain that communication with you, um, but be weary of not rushing or letting your mind uh, take over and start imagining all these crazy scenarios because I feel like it's not something that is going to be constant. So could be the planet alignments right now, uh, people from the past coming back around. So just keep that in mind. <clears throat> okay. Now let's see Aquarius. What is, what is it that Aquarius needs to know at this point in time? What is it that Aquarius needs to know at this point in time? Aquarius, sun, moon, rising, Venus. What is it that they need to know at this point in time? All right. We have the wheel. The Knight of Swords, the Ace of Swords. Wow, someone's coming towards you, uh, Aquarius. And the Nine of Pentacles. I see you going into this, um, going into this cycle in the next coming weeks of a lot of abundance, a lot of opportunities. Um, opportunities that perhaps you thought had passed you by or you missed out on. Um, I see a revisiting of that. For some of you guys, if there was contracts that were falling or contracts that weren't coming through. I feel like they're coming back around and they're wanting to renegotiate or they're wanting to put more things on the table uh, that it's going to be more beneficial for you. Uh, money is definitely going to come in for you guys. A lot of possibilities, a lot of new endeavors. Um, and I see you guys wanting to put money into certain things. So for some of you guys, it could be starting a small, you know, small business. For others of you, it could be just that you are trying to look into stocks or just for some of you guys, I physically see you guys like pulling money out of the bank. Could be that you feel more comfortable having cash in hand. Um, but there is definitely more abundance and stability coming in for you guys. I also do see a message coming through. We do have the Wheel of the Year uh, with the Knight of Swords and the Ace of Wands. So to me, again, it's almost giving me the energy of the Capricorn reading uh, where I see like a person coming back around trying to contact you guys. This is a person from the past that perhaps you guys didn't end in, you know, good terms exactly. Um, and there's this feeling of wanting to revisit, wanting to, can we, you know, can we go there basically? Um, and I do see that it could potentially start off as something uh, where, like I said, they contact you, uh, you guys continue the conversation and then, uh, both of you guys are inspired or both of you guys are, you know, getting, you know, caught up in the emotions or in the feelings. If you want something solid from this connection, take it slow, Aquarius, do not rush into it because if you're quickly to take it to the physical, it's not going to last. It's, they're just going to keep it pushing. So again, my advice, if this is something that you're wanting to revisit, especially because it's someone from the past, if you're wanting to revisit or get to that opportunity um, to talk it over or whatever and you get caught up in the moment, make sure not to take it to the physical because then you're going to be left ha hanging, you know, hanging dry. So be smart about that shit. All right, and finally, let's go to Pisces. Let's see what the message is for Pisces here. Pisces, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus. What is the message for Pisces, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus? What is it that they need to know at this point in time? What is it that they need to know at this point in time? Pisces, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. Okay. We have Ten of Pentacles, Two of Cups, and the Wheel. Wow. Nine of Pentacles. All right, so Pisces, I see for a lot of you guys, especially those of you guys that have been single or are single currently, I definitely do see a destined connection coming through for you. For some of you guys, this is a person that is going to be introduced to you through a family setting. So it could be a friend of a relative. It could be that there is a social gathering in your home or in your family's home. 
uh, and this person comes through. For some of you guys, it could be uh, that you decide to take this connection to the next level. And when I say this connection, I feel like for some of you guys, this could be a childhood friend. This could be someone that you've known in the past. This could be someone that perhaps grew up with you guys. Um, as an example, it could be like a friend of your brother or, or a friend of your sister, someone you've known, um, but then all of a sudden they're all grown up now and there is definitely sparks flying here. Um, for the majority of you, I am sensing that it is someone that is going to be very connected uh, to either your family or connected to your childhood. So it could be a childhood friend. Uh, it could be someone that you cared for, but you guys just never seen each other in that aspect. And I see a reconnection happening here with the two of cups and the wheel. I feel like this is predestined for others of you. It is getting out of a relationship because you're making the, the, the decision of having to make a difficult decision, but choosing to be happy. And in the choosing of your happiness, you're choosing to have some distance to yourself or have some time to yourself to find yourself all over again. So for some of you guys, especially those of you guys that are going through like difficult situations right now in your relationship, there is a questioning of who am I? What is it that I'm, you know, that I want from this connection? What is it that I want from this relationship? Am I the same person that I was when I fell in love with them? The answer to that is probably no. So you're questioning a lot of things right now. My advice for you guys, those of you guys that can connect with that message, don't be quick to make hasty decisions. If it is time that you need, be upfront and be honest with your partner about it. Um, I think everyone goes through those cycles in their lives where there is a need to internalize certain things. And it's okay to ask for space. Even if you still remain in the relationship, it's okay for them to understand that you need space, you need room. Um, and in doing that, you can make that decision for yourself. But again, don't rush into making any decision because I feel like if you rush it, um, you're going to later regret that. So just be mindful of that. All right, my lovelies. Okay, I hope you guys enjoyed these readings. Like, share, and comment. Uh, and I will see you guys soon. Till then, bye.